Oh god, I've been waiting so long to say this. I, uh... My code finally works. The whole thing that I was testing with my thesis so far was making sure that I could solve the Schrodinger equation for these two potentials. The first one corresponding to the static potential for a positron and then for an electron, where L are the quantum numbers for angular momentum, K is just some input constant, R is the independent variable, so just the radius. Okay, and then after doing this, I was supposed to calculate the phase shift of the wave function. And all of these values are well understood, it's well established. So the delta plus and the delta minus correspond to the phase shift for a positron and a, an electron for the static potential for a given angular momentum quantum number. And these are the values that I was supposed to get. And these are the values that I get. So as you can see, they're not perfect with them, but that is just something that can be fixed by adjusting the step size that I'm using. Because so keep in mind, I'm not, I don't have a continuous function I'm solving for. You're discretizing the space and slapping it onto a grid, and each point is separated by some distance h. So you're not taking the limit as h goes to zero. You're specifying an h that's sufficiently small. So I just need to play around with better h values, and then that should clear up uh, and match perfectly. The next step is to start calculating the triple differential cross sections, which should. The, I, the reason I'm so excited is because I think the hard part is out of the way. Famous last words. But I think uh, calculating these phase shifts was supposed to be the difficult part because what it was was me making sure that I have a differential equation solver that works for an arbitrary potential. And now it works for one. So now I just need to swap it for the one that I'm supposed to be using for my actual thesis, because remember, this is just the test, and start calculating triple differential cross-sections. If you haven't seen the previous video, triple differential cross-section basically supplies as complete a picture of the quantum system you're working with as you can without also measuring the spin. So what we're looking at are triple differential cross-sections for electron-positron scattering. What I ended up doing was completely rewriting the code. I, I could not find where I was going wrong with the code that I had written, so I scrapped it and wrote it in a different way. Initially, I wrote it using lists, and I would evaluate these functions that I would define, and then append those values to lists, and it was hard to keep track of how many elements were in my list, and all this stuff like that. So it was hard to keep track of all the indexes. So instead, I used arrays, and uh, I think one of the things that was going wrong was I wasn't updating my potential. Or rather, when I was updating it, meaning evaluate the potential at x equals 1, x equals 2, x equals 3, it would be doing that, but I wasn't saving those values. I was just using the first value for some reason. So that was a problem that got rid of, and now everything works perfectly, and it's really exciting. So the next step for me that my advisor wants me to do is write up everything I've done while it's fresh. So I'm going to do that over the weekend, start writing up my thesis a little bit. I need to uh, derive some stuff. I need to derive the static potential for the hydrogen atom because that was my test function. I need to put that in the appendix of my paper. I need to derive the Numerov method to show why it works as a differential equation solver, put that in the appendix of the paper. And um, that's probably all I'm going to get to this weekend. I might start trying to calculate triple differential cross sections. Also really cool news is my professor sent me a little bit of information regarding my summer project that I'll be doing. Allow me to read you some of the said info. <clears throat> I work on trying to understand quark and gluon interactions via the details of high energy relativistic collisions. I'm attaching some of the mi I'm attaching some of the materials that I normally give to graduate students who are considering working with me. The specific project I have in mind for this summer has to do with something called semi-inclusive deep inelastic scattering in experiments at JLab. This is where a high energy electron beam hits a proton and shatters it, hence deep inelastic. A detector measures the recoiling electron, but it also catches a pion that was produced in the collision, hence semi-inclusive. People are hoping to use the pattern of production of produced pions to work backwards and deduce the internal structure of the proton in terms of quarks and gluons. But the quantum chromodynamics theory is subtle enough that it isn't clear how this will work in practice. 
One difficulty is that the relativistic kinematics of the overall collision are somewhat complicated. We need to figure out exactly how to map the kinematics of a produced pion to the kinematics of one of the quarks or gluons involved in the collision. This is what I'm hoping to achieve this summer. <coughs> it will primarily involve special relativity calculations along with visualization and a bit of computation. I'm hoping it will go on a paper. There's some pretty intense background material, blah, 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 blah. and then he sends me a PDF of a bunch of stuff. I don't know why I'm talking into this. It's not even plugged in. Basically what I'm getting out of this is you take the end result of a scattering problem, you take production and the pattern of produced pions, and you fit data to that. So you, you work backwards from this production and see what the overall mechanics of the gluons and quarks interacting uh, how that would have to fit together in order to yield that kind of result. At first glance, it kind of reminds me of organic chemistry, where we would be given uh, the beginning step, the beginning like molecules that you're working with, and the end, and you'd have to put in the mechanism that caused that. This kind of reminds me of that. could be completely different. In fact, it's almost definitely completely different. I should have time over this weekend to actually have more involved videos, things that are more fun and dynamic to watch instead of me by a door. So that's something to look forward to and it's less monotonous for me to make, but as for the purposes of this video, this one's pretty much concluding because I want to start reviewing this QCD stuff that my professor sent me and I want to get a jump start on this thesis. So. Hope you guys found this video interesting. It's nice to actually have some results with my thesis to, to show, even though it's just the test. And it's also really nice to know, have an idea of what I'm going to be researching over the summer. Uh, let me know if you guys found it interesting in the comment section. I'll see you guys there.